equilibrium vapor pressure. So we've already learned about how equilibrium means that like a forward and reverse reactions are happening at the same rate they're finding in equilibrium. So now we're gonna talk about how pressure sort of affects that. So pressure exerted by a, liqu a liquid in equilibrium with its vapor. So that what that means is that a liquid in a closed system has a pressure. There's a pressure exerted by, by the liquid and a pressure exerted by the system. So there's like two opposing pressures. Um, we can kind of see that here in the little picture. Um, this is kind of what a barometer looks like where you have mercury and then you have a closed um, like system and then you have some sort of something like when we use this for temperature outside, it's, you know, open to the air. Um, and we can kind of see what the pressure is, um, but you can also do something specific. So like it, this picture has water in it. So you can see that in the, in the second picture, the middle one, the liquid water is exerting pressure on this gas, which the gas then starts to exert in the third picture, the gas then, then starts to exert pressure on the water. So we find like this equilibrium. So here three arrows are going up and one arrow is going down. And then as they find equilibrium, we have two arrows going up and two going down and they find um, an equilibrium where that pressure equals each other, the pressure of the gas on the water and the pressure of the water on the gas. Um, and then we can record that pressure in this like top part of the barometer over here. But um, we'll get to that when we get to partial pressures. Um, but vapor pressure means that the gas is exerting a pressure and the liquid is exerting a pressure. And they will find a point at which those um, pressures are the same. Uh, if the concentration of the water, like if you put more water in there, you're going to put more pressure. It's going to be less volume. It's going to be more pressure. If you increase the temperature, those gas, those water molecules are going to move faster and turn into gas molecules. So the pressure will go up, but it will find a new equilibrium. Boiling point. Um, so boiling point can be affected by pressure, uh, by vapor pressure. Uh, we see that all the time, like in real life, when we go to higher elevation places, water boils at a, a lower temperature, ideally at exactly um, one atmosphere, normal boiling point, water would boil at 100 degrees Celsius. But if you go to like higher elevations, um, Denver, tops of mountains, anything like that, um, you can kind of see in this picture on Mount Everest, water would boil at under 70 degrees Celsius. That's a hot day. Like most days here in Southern California, it is 70 degrees Celsius. So that means our water would already be boiling if our pressure was as little as it is on the top of Mount Everest. Um, Mount Kilimanjaro is 80 degrees Celsius, um, which means the pressure is a little higher up there, but not much. Um, the Dead Sea is below sea level, so the pressure there or the temperature there is higher actually than 100 degrees Celsius. So um, the pressure of the system, in this case our Earth, can change the, the temperature at which a liquid becomes a gas. Um, we reference water a lot because that's sort of our universal solvent and it's a very well-known boiling point. So that boiling point of 100 degrees changes when the atmosphere changes. Um, molar heat, we call that, we also call the enthalpy of vaporization. So the enthalpy, uh, enthalpy is measured in kilojoules per mole. So it's the amount of energy needed to vaporize one mole of liquid at its boiling point. That's enthalpy of vaporization. We also have enthalpy of fusion, which is the same definition, except it's at its freezing point. The point at which we go from a solid to a liquid is um, enthalpy of fusion or molar heat of fusion. And then the point at which we go from a liquid to a gas is molar heat of vaporization or enthalpy of vaporization. There is a standard um, value for those. So for this picture you can see is for water. So 6.01 kilojoules per mole of uh, um, is the enthalpy of fusion, the molar heat of fusion for, for ice. And then for vaporization, it's for water. Um, 
but every substance on the entire planet has its own value. You won't be expected to memorize those, but you will in um, later calculations be expected to use them in a calculation. We use those in the calculations when we're in a phase change. So that's when we use enthalpy is when we're in a phase change here from like this point um, and to this point here, our water is just increasing in heat, um, which is why we're going from zero to 100 degrees Celsius, but it plateaus at 100 and it plateaus at zero because that's a point at which we have um, an equilibrium. If you keep it, if you keep it, if you put in enough energy to keep the temperature at zero degrees Celsius, not let it go above, not let it go below, you will have an equilibrium between ice and water where both states exist because both states exist at zero. Um, so that's the um, enthalpy of fusion, molar heat of fusion, and then molar heat of vaporization is when both liquid and gas both exist. We'll figure out how to um, how to um, calculate the change in temperature, and we'll figure out how to calculate when it's not changing in temperature, when it's in its phase change.